Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. As is typical um, on these manipulated events we call eclipses, um, objects showed up last night. We filmed three. I have two to present. One clip was lost. Anyhow, the first one is coming in at the right, almost mid-frame. You will see him right there. He's come into frame. Now, this is kind of interesting because I've been wanting to do a focus test to try to determine distance. So as it gets to the dark patch, you're going to see the object go out of focus because I wanted to see if the moon would defocus at the same time right here, which it does slightly. It's hard to tell with the full spectrum camera, and I really need to do this test when I'm in visual spectrum because it's much easier to get what appears to be a sharper focus in the visual spectrum than it is using the full spectrum. So let me blow this object in a little bit. Okay, here's the blow up. It's coming in at the right mid frame and you'll get a better view and you can see when I pull him out of focus that the moon comes with him and actually unfortunately I don't get the focus quite perfect on the way back but that's okay because I have another example so right there I pull it out of focus the moon goes out of focus and as I pull it back into focus um, it's not quite perfect after that it's difficult to do all this on the fly and I do have another object just like this a lot of people who are seeing these for the first time are going to think they're looking at balloons and satellites coming in at the mid-right frame. Um, these are not balloons and these are not satellites and anyone who goes back through the clips on um, my channel will see many examples of these things and explanations for what we have learned over time. Um, I just don't have time to do a long clip today because I'm preparing to shoot the eclipse. There it is where I pulled it out of focus. You could see the moon go slightly out of focus as the object does. I was trying to determine if that object is so much closer that I could pull it into tighter focus while losing slight focus on the moon. That doesn't appear to be the case, but the truth is I need to do this in visual spectrum. Here comes the object at right. Now what I'm doing here is running a find edge, filter, uh, contrast, brightness, and channel inversion. So on a lot of the clips when I'm running filters, it'll look like the object goes behind a crater. What that actually is is me just manipulating, like right there, it looked like it went behind a crater. If you look at the original footage, that's not the case. It's just the fact that I've manipulated colors and contrast and a few things. We're going to take one more view. And again, uh, we have not seen objects transiting the moon in many months since I've filmed anything like this. And this was filmed the night before the eclipse. The eclipse is today. I filmed three objects. Unfortunately, um, the first object, I either accidentally deleted it or the clip did not save properly. But I have another one that's even slightly better than this uh, that Croet actually shot, and I'll be presenting that one next. There it's defocused and refocused. Um, at any rate, there it is, uh, objects showing up right before the eclipse. People who have followed will understand that this has happened before on many occasions. And uh, let's look, take a quick look at the calendar, and then I've got a setup to shoot. So here's the days that we'd like to film. The lunar wave was caught by Richard 205 Maria on the 20th. The 23rd was the equinox, and here we are on the night of the 27th, which is the eclipse for many of us. Um, very critical that we shoot the eclipse and try to determine whether or not it actually makes it to full. As I've said before, eclipses are manipulated events. Then we have another three predicted best chances to catch the lunar wave until the 30th. So I hope everyone's out shooting the can, and good luck for those of you who are shooting the eclipse. Cheers.